power partner và yeah, multiple intelligences so, nhưng mà thật ra có rất là nhiều way thành ra my title actually is learning style you know it could be four it could be eight it could be nine it could be fourteen uh, uh, you know there are many many ways but what is it gonna work so I'm gonna share that with you now a lot of people say you know I'm a doctor by training uh, I'm a you know clinical health counseling why would I be interested in a learning style Number one, uh, because medicine is very much integrated with the brain and the behavioral learning and the cognitive learning, and you know also the emotional and the spiritual aspect of learning as well. So, for example, uh, you, nếu mà nếu mà mình nghĩ rằng là oh, mọi người phải giống nhau hết, right? Thì mình teach one way. Thì are we serving our Members, are we serving our kids? Are we serving our adult uh, um, that we interact? Or are we going to make them feel, well, you know, I can't climb tree. If you expect a fish to climb tree, it's safe. Huh? I can't do that at all. Uh, technically, they say that this is from Albert Einstein, but we really don't know whether it's him or not. So can we teach all children to climb tree? Yeah, I think we can. We strive to be. It depends on how we teach them and what our expectation of climbing tree mean. Is it all the way at the top? Or as long as they touch the trunk, you know, that they have the same experience with other children, uh, then, you know, we can accomplish the purpose and make them and make the kids feel, you know, this is a meaningful experience. This is something fun I want to do. You know, this recognizes me, my ability, and my belonging my inclusion into this group. Let me mean we understand that there's a different way children and adults learn. You know? And the most important thing, I think like children depend on us to decide what to teach, when to teach, how to teach, and you know what the expectation, how do we prepare the lesson and how do we transmit to them, you know, it's very different. You know, my adult child, when she went to college, she said, Mom, I'm not doing what you asked me to do anymore. I'm not going to show you my grade. I'm not going to show you, you know, whether I've done my work or not. As long as I know what I'm doing, then, you know, be assured that, you know, I, I'm able to get my work done. And she even said, the more you're going to ask me, the more I'm not going to do it. Right. So young adults and kids have different predisposition attitudes. Uh, taught learning and how do we make the learning fun, meaningful, and effective? And the most, and and I think the end outcome is how do they translate what we teach them into application into their daily life? Okay, and I'm gonna have a little uh, example to show you. So, what's the definition of learning? So, I'm gonna strive to present for about uh, 20 minutes. Nothing big, chút xíu, nothing mỹ, nhiều hơn. And then hopefully at the end of 20 minutes, we'll open it up for uh, some conversation. Yeah, so at this time, because I'm sharing screen, I'm not going to be able to see any uh, questions on the chat at all. Yeah. Uh, so learning is a change in behavior as a result of experience and practice. Tất nhiên là khi mà mình dạy con mình, tất nhiên nó phải thay đổi cái, 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 cái cách nó ứng xử hay là nó biết là ngồi chỗ nào là đúng viết như thế nào là đúng khi mà hỏi hai tới cộng hai tất nhiên nó phải là bốn chứ không phải rằng là uh, năm phải không uh, I used to ask my young kid I think she was in uh, in uh, first grade and I asked con con and I showed to her I said con một cộng một là gì con and she said it's eleven I'm like con một cộng một how is it eleven right and she said well mẹ mẹ có một and so more. So when you put together, that's 11. I mean, that's a very smart way, you know, for the kid to answer me because visually that's how she sees. So I can see right away that the way I'm presenting to her was not the appropriate way for me to expect her to know what one plus one is, okay? So what are we trying to teach kids knowledge or skill by presenting the information to them? And again, the process of how they what they learn and and then translate that 
into the application into different uh, circumstances and different uh, environment. Okay, so key moment teach them. You know, we teach kids knowledge, like những cái tin tức, những cái concept, khái niệm, những cái skill là những cái uh, ứng dụng và cái attitude là khi mà nó học hay là nó đối diện đối xử với cái gì đó thì nó sẽ thích hay nó không thích nó nhìn vào cái này một cách tích cực hay là một cách tiêu cực nha yeah. so I'm gonna talk about the eight ways of learning phải không thì we can talk about the learning style as you can see here there's only seven you know it's a very simple way that we present uh, initially actually Dr Howard Lano says seven and then he add in eight and then eventually he also add in the ninth one, which is the existential one, which I'm not gonna you know, present here, okay? So we talk about intrapersonal, like within a person, visual, spatial, okay? Then we talk about uh, linguistic, uh, um, verbal, that is, khi mà người ta nghe, người ta uh, nói, uh, thì dễ hơn logical là cái 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 đầu óc uh, you know biết phân tích đồ này kia body kinesthetic they teach they learn by movement interpersonal they they learn by you know in a group working with each other uh, musical uh, you know they help better when there's music uh, or information presented in a musical way uh, uh, and or naturalist you know which is uh, in the uh, natural environment, okay? So what do we talk about the people, you know, who learn in a visual way? Uh, you know, vivid imagination. Khi mà mình dạy cho người ta đó, you know, it's given chart, graph, infographic, flashcard, outline, colors, uh, gesture, facial expression. Uh, so these people learn really well when like we dramatize it, we act it out, uh, we show in concrete, uh, have ex hands-on experience để mà they thấy được thì như vậy là họ học rất là tốt. Okay? Thì we can see là uh, có những cái thánh. Uh, uh, you know, initially I was going to go and search, but then I found from one resources where they went through which saint, uh, you know, have certain um, intelligence patterns. So I share that with you. Uh, this person gave me the resources and I didn't have to do a lot of work at all. Okay? So musical, rhyme, audio book, listening, placing, composing, background music, discussion, debate, those things are really important. And uh, uh, analogies, metaphor. Uh, some people ask me, okay, nếu mà các em nó ngồi, nó học, mà nó nghe nhạc nhiều quá, thì is that going to help or is that not going to help? Right? It depends. It depends on cái gì? Depend on tuổi tác, depends on the person constitution, you know, the intelligence level, depends on lương học cái gì, you know, is it a complex topic or is it a simple one? What kind of music are they listening to? What's the tempo, you know, what's the tune like? You know, thành ra, nhiều khi người ta nói rằng là cho người lớn tuổi hay là cho baby đồ này kia, những cái nhạc này giống như là classical music works better. But then you come to like teenager, you know, they might like rap, they might like uh, really loud uh, rock music, the Nakia, but yet not allow them to, to tune out, you know, the anxiety, uh, tune out the, the, the stress that they're experiencing and allow them to focus on whatever they, they have to learn in front of them, even if it's a complex topic. Nha Tandra, in terms of listening music while studying, uh, it's a person dependent. It's not the teacher dependent at all. It's a learner dependent. So physical, kinesthetic, touching, you know, sport, exercise, drawing, role play, worksheet, even those things, dancing, uh, physical object, game, puzzle, different things that, you know, they, they can use uh, to learn. Giống như, we learn a lot about uh, uh, St. Thomas, you know, uh, and Blessed Torsho Prasadi, which are the people that very much into the physical learning uh, pattern. Verbal linguistic, these people learn much better within group discussion, class presentation, uh, 
acronym mnemonic, uh, wordplay rhyme. And um, I really like that, you know, St. Augustine, uh, Archbishop Fulton Sheen, hồi đó, and St. John Chrysostom, but they say that the saint with the golden mouth, okay, these are definitely, uh, you know, the verbal linguistic type. The logical analytical type, uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, my, my, uh, it's like my role model. You know why? Because I do not understand the majority of what we write. I read the summer and I have no clue. I and mean, if I understand maybe 5%, that's the best. So, so to me, I look up to him so much because I don't understand of what he says a lot. Okay. But for the logic, logical analytical, you know, usually learn, teach some key concepts. What goals are we trying to achieve? Share how information are related. So it's more of the abstract thinking uh, than a concrete uh, kind of learning. Yeah? Social, interpersonal, it's more group work, role play, allow them to question each other, question us. Uh, you know, type like allow them to shadow us. Let's see how we do. You know, you see one, you do one, and you teach one. This is a kind of social, uh, interpersonal kind of learning. And these people are quite empathetic. They can read emotion. You know, they, they read people better. They read the environment better. See? The solo interpersonal, I feel are like more the introverted learner. They love independent learning. They are self-motivated, independent study. Uh, you give them notepad, they take note. Um, give them map, give them timeline. Let them see the concept we presented. Uh, you know, how does it fit into the whole schema? You know, that's a word when that you want like the word schema. These people are really good at learning from a schema aspect. They're more self-aware of what's going on. And the naturalistic, but you know, try to bring nature into the lessons. You know, how do we teach them outdoors? You know, how do we also bring the outdoors into the lesson? And an experiment. Uh, teach about pattern, about classification. Of course, you know, we know very much about Pope St. John Paul II, St. Francis Assisi, you know, and St. Terry uh, Takawita, um, the Indian saint, um, the, the, the Native American saint that we know about. Okay. So I want to share with you, even though I present to you these type of multiple intelligence learning, uh, and we do use them, by the way. Okay. There's no absolutely no evidence-based support. There has been no research that say, oh, if you teach them the multiple intelligence, they're gonna learn very well. Okay? No, there's no, no research to support that this is a one way to teach the student well. However, if we can tailor the way we teach the student to what their preferences and what they're good at, then the student can make the learner experience very enjoyable, fun for them, meaningful for them, and they can succeed academically. And also when we combine learning style, it it does enhance the student learning. And of course, we always avoid one size fits all approach, right? So does it mean that, you know, for for any one lesson that we have to pre prepare the lesson in multiple ways you know i don't think so at all how do we not do that you don't have to because if you look at this brain connection whether people learn logically linguistically spatial you know it a lot it involves a lot of frontal cortex you know which is the executive function cái chỗ mà mình cũng giống như các em phải engage để mà mình học được để mà mình uh, hiểu mình nhớ và mình uh, strategize into our memory brain. Không? Nếu mà các em mà nó không có nhớ được để mà nó lấy ra nó thực tập trở lại thì nó chưa có learn được nhưng mà nếu mà mình dạy cho các em thì khi mà các em nó nhớ được nó thực tập được đó phải nhờ những cái bộ phận trong ốc não thì nó mới làm được. Okay? Thì so we look at the brain-based learning and what I'm showing you on this slide is this is what we call brain-based learning. Well, 
So it doesn't matter how we teach kids, it's very deeply influenced by social interaction and relationship. Do kids feel warm to us? Do kids feel that we respect them? Do kids feel belonging in a group? Do kids feel like we do care for them? You know, kids are very smart. And when I go to camp and I teach, I say, you know, các em hôn trưởng, các em nghĩ rằng là các em teach only là the easy stuff, right? Oh, then you can tell whether you prepare or you weren't prepared and you just try to go in and do something and really uh, they can tell that you didn't plan very well uh, eventually. They may not tell right away at first, but if that is your pattern, the kids gonna tell because they can tell how other people teach them differently, how the sisters, how you know different people teach them, and they can pick up, you know, in a way that we prepare lesson. It probably not too far. Okay, and then the next thing is a serve return. Có nghĩa rằng là từ khi mà em bé nói được sinh ra, you know, mình u u a a với nó, mình cười với nó, mình talk about panties với nó, ah, you know, panty có nghĩa là student learner into the learning experience. Okay? And again, khi mà mình talk about những người mà no diversion, là những cái người mà cái sự phát triển uh, ốc não bộ của họ đa dạng đó. Ví dụ hồi đó mình gọi là a typical uh, child, thế ông là không bất bình thường hay là không có bình thường. Thì bây giờ cái cái term terminology mình dùng dùng là no diversion. Thì we need to approach the strength. You know, nó mạnh là cái gì để mà mình dạy các em từ từ từ, từ những cái mạnh của các em. Ví dụ như các em nó Bây giờ nó, nó có autism, right? Nó have a lot of flapping hand movement, right? Then nó have a lot of self-stimulation behavior. Then maybe, you know, teach them by word is not the best way, but maybe teach them with movement. It probably is a better way to engage that student. Okay, and again, like I share, make learning fun in a safe space, make learning meaningful. And in a safe space có nghĩa rằng là Uh, you know, không có a lot of noise, bé nó feel uh, at ease, nó không có bị cảm thấy là nó bị la, hay nó đói, hay nó bệnh, hay này kia, nha. không có cái gì chung quanh mà làm cho nó sợ. Okay. So I want to take this example. Uh, cảm ơn trưởng Joseph từ San Palita. He sent me the the uh, the example for weekly gospel uh, for next week where, you know, Chúa hiện ra. Không? Thì, and cái virtual mình phải learn là courage. Không? For the visual learner, he, the Indian, we show pictures, you know, we could talk at the same time, we show pictures, we let them touch who's Jesus, you know, who are the disciples, what Jesus is doing, you know, so different picture depends on the developmental age của các em. So, hay là nếu mình talk about auditory learner, thì là dĩ nhiên, we have the Bible reading and we let them read, you know, mỗi người phải read a section, uh, you know, read with different intonation, con gái viết làm sao con trai viết làm sao thì dù vậy interspersed nó thì không phải một người cứ viết mà nát nó sli you know how does the picture reflect the reading thì dù vậy những cái như vậy thì sẽ giúp cho musical learner uh, thì you know mình có thể là dùng thế what is the idea of this you know gospel and what is a song that can talk to you about that uh, you know is there a video is there a, a movie uh, that you know, can express uh, this gospel uh, uh, message. Okay? And then, you know, for the physical learner, you know, the different uh, um, teaching aids that we could use uh, to, to help them. And how does, how do these tell you about courage? You know, so always relate uh, to the virtue we have to teach them. Okay? And for the solo learners, you know, teach about you know, various uh, appearance of Jesus and how does it fit in? And what does it mean that, you know, tại sao Chúa phải hiện ra? Okay. And for the logical learners, you know, teach about the significance of Jesus' appearance. And how is that relate to the courage virtue? Okay. 
And then for the naturalistic, uh, you know, I, I just thought, and again, all of these were my thinking uh, as I prepare, you know, this presentation. Uh, you know, they love the outdoors. Right? So put this in perspective of the map that where Jesus appeared uh, to different people, um, uh, you know, in the uh, 50 days after the resurrection. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for listening. It's a whirlwind presentation. Uh, and I hope that uh, uh, you get the message and I remain available for questions. I'm going to stop sharing. And then, yeah. Yeah. There we go. Now I can see the chat. All right, time for question. Thank you. I would like to let you know, I went to Texas uh, a few weeks ago and I met uh, Thomas. Uh, Thomas, I, 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 I want to share with uh, more English. I, I, so, show off and be see you, Emya. Let me see. I, I hopefully I, I did not. Um, let me see. He is a music therapist. Uh, Joseph. Joseph, don't forget Thomas. Joseph Wang, he is from Linh Duang, Điện Đức. And he is a music therapist. And I was so happy to meet him because I do not see a lot of music therapists, uh, you know, around. And we get to talk a little bit. Uh, so since we don't have any questions, uh, Joseph, I... Chị ơi, có một người giơ tay, có chuyện giơ tay, có question. Simon, oh, yeah. okay. Thành ra Simon hỏi, xong rồi sau đó, nếu mà được, uh, Joseph Quang... Em có thể chia sẻ một tí xíu về, you know, what you do as a music therapist. Em nhé. Rồi, chị mời trưởng uh, Simon. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt your uh, story. Okay, I, I do want to hear the story as well. Um, no, I was just interested in the references um, you gave us. Do you know if they'll be available? Because I, I really like the um, the the eight slides you had with um, the different types of intelligence and how the saints manifest that. Um, is that a resource you can send to us after? And also the uh, the academic references would be interesting as well. Yeah, anh Linh sẽ bỏ vô cái education center đúng không thưa anh Linh? Yes, yeah, tất cả những cái course này nó trong cái education center including cái recording and I will show oh. you the link later. Okay. Okay, cảm ơn you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, nếu mà không ai hỏi thì em hỏi chị thế này thì tâm uh, can you just uh, help us to understanding what's the best uh, uh, you know style when we have a uh, um, diverse needs uh, children in our life. Let's just say, uh, what, you know, it, it, the, the regular style, we got you, you talk and then they just listening and then responding. But for the uh, special needs, you know, what's the best way when uh, uh, get local, they can work with them to teach them something. Let's just say, teach them about Jesus love or teach them about, uh, you know, how to receive the Holy Communion or whatever. Mm -hmm. So can you share that with them? Um, for, for your questions. Uh, before I answer your question, I think it's very common, which I have seen, uh, you know, and throughout my work. When we don't have the expertise that we go to school for, we train for, uh, we work with, right? And we have to experience that in VEYM it tends to make us have a little fear, a little reservation. Oh, I don't know what that is. I don't know how I can do that. I think that is already a psychological and a cognitive and an emotional barrier. And then làm cho mình doesn't matter what you do. You always make yourself and your student feel like you're not enough. The student is not enough, right? The cái, cái, cái reservation, cái discomfort của mình, nó làm cho người ta cảm thấy như vậy. Okay? So I would like to share that it doesn't matter that you're competent or not. The most important thing we ask for is how you treat the other person and how you make yourself and the other person feel comfortable in your interaction. The next is 
expectation. I think we should, we, I would recommend do not have an expectation that because VEYM say you have to teach một hai ba bốn năm sáu bảy tám chín mười có nghĩa rằng là you have to teach this person một hai ba bốn năm sáu bảy tám chín mười okay tailor it back you know giống như cái example I show about courage right bây giờ ví dụ như một đứa ấu nhi ồ oh, chúa hiện ra tại sao chúa hiện ra chúa hiện ra tại vì chúa thương mình và chúa nói cho mình biết rằng chúa sẽ ở đây với mình no matter what and mình để cho mình có cái can đảm khi mà có khó khăn gì đi nữa mình cũng có chúa How, how do you feel that in your own life? You know, uh, khi mà em sợ, em có ai? Em có cha mẹ. Cha mẹ make you feel good. Cha mẹ make you feel comfortable. Cha mẹ give you courage, give you support. Yeah. So, in a way, you know, your parents is an extension of God in here to support you. So, make it very simple like that. Uh, you know, and, 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 You know how, how do you know your parents care for you? If you know if you if you want to know how God cares for you, well, how do you know your parents care for you? How do you know your parents love you? Because love is an act of concept. Well, so love, but love actually is defined as the to will the good of the others. So you know, mẹ 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 nấu ăn cho em, mẹ nấu cho em này, mẹ nấu cho em kia ba chở em đi, không? thì cái đó là cái cái lo đó thành ra mình have to prepare and know how to translate what we need to teach into something very simple and concrete. And one more là, you know, mình before we go in, ask the parents, you know, cái em này khi mà nó học Uh, khi em nó học, what the best way to teach them? You know, how does that person learn at school? Uh, how do you teach the kid at home? Uh, well, and then make the learning, you know, maybe five minutes uh, only. You know, nhưng mà ngồi chơi với em nó nhiều hơn. Just being present, uh, you know, being there to um, to uh, to let them know that you're there with them. Uh, so, uh, But you know the actual teaching start well before you teach by being present and by by making uh you know the whole learning experience meaningful for the person. So, anh Linh à, uh, anh trả lời vậy. Anh nghĩ là is that enough to to address uh, your question? Mm. Không, mà chỉ có muốn uh, chị chia sẻ là uh, đối với những cái em mà có cái special need là đoàn như vậy đó yeah. thì các chữ làm thế nào để mà có thể help working with them using what type of the style that you just talking about. Um, uh, uh, thông thường thì ở những cái cái service, những cái center mà người ta giúp các em đó thì cái cái method nào người ta hay dùng chẳng hạn như em cũng có nghe nói là uh, có một số người thì có những cái em đó, nó có cái Um, high functioning đó, thì họ dùng music để họ calm em down chẳng hạn như vậy đó. thì em tụi em muốn nghe thêm những cái uh, cái cạnh đó uh, different style of, apply for different um, um, problem của các em mà có cái special need đó chị yeah, yeah again những cái em có special need nó will be different right if you mm-hmm. talk about uh, children with autism right có đứa nó very sensitive to noise so you can't use music to teach them okay but maybe you know they you be able to teach by visual show them picture or, or physical okay hay là take them outdoor you might they enjoy that uh or uh, uh or you know teach them with different games you know có những em uh, you know có thể nó good with rhythm then you know you would teach them with rhythm in, in, in order to help them learn uh có những em mà uh, những em có autism hoặc những cái em có cerebral palsy, right? They have trouble with moving the fingers, but they may have enough to use một cái we gọi là cái AAC là the augmentative uh, communication device. Đó. Tất nhiên là insurance and school will give them một cái device mà on there nó đã set up sẵn. How do you commute to other people what you want? How do you uh, 
ask for certain thing nó đã set sẵn ở trong đó rồi and they can push the button and they can talk to us there are certain devices that will speak for them they will pre-step những cái button and they only touch one button and it will say oh I want to ask you about okay you know and these people learn really well which button will say that uh, thành ra nó depend on cái intellectual level của uh, okay. các em để mà người ta set sẵn trong cái AAC mm. okay. nào có những cái em nó hơi uh, chậm mà nó không có xài cái AAC được có thể nó sẽ có một cái book the picture picture book mà in there người ta đã bỏ hình sẵn ở trong đó đã nếu muốn ăn cái gì thì thì thì, thì chỉ uh, tới giờ mà muốn đi tiểu hay là đi chạy chơi thì nó sẽ chỉ không so like I said mình phải nói chuyện với cha mẹ để mà coi trong trường và ở nhà what's the best way to teach các em rồi từ đó mình mới là sort of know how to prepare I would recommend that do not go in and think, oh, you know, for a child with autism, I'm going to present this way. No. When you, when we met one child with autism, we met one child with autism. We did not, we would not know the next child, you know, with autism at all. You know, Tanja, we have to learn about the child. We have to learn from the family how the child learn. And again, you know, kids do get, uh, kids do develop differently at certain years. How you taught them last year may not be the same this year. Some kids get better, some kids stay the same, and some kids do regress. There's children with autism, as they grow older, go through the teen years, they may get seizures, you know, they may get some mental health issue, they get on medication that Uh, especially like some atypical antipsychotic like Risperdal or Bilofi or Nikita. Những cái medication đó nó nhiều khi nó cause những cái issue khác làm cho em có thể là khó học hơn. So you have to um, to reevaluate uh, every year. Uh, you know, anything new happen, uh, talk to cha mẹ của cái em đó, meet them. Uh, and uh, oh, the other thing is, you know, nhiều khi mình nghĩ rằng là khi mà các em mà nó tới uh, thiếu nhi là là cha mẹ chỉ bỏ đó rồi đi thôi. You know, you sort of take over and you act like okay, you babysitter uh, for that one and a half hour or two hours. You know, I would recommend let flip that kind of mentality. You know, we include. But it doesn't mean that we exclude, we include the kid doesn't mean that we exclude the parents. Because in medicine, in behavior health, in applied behavior analysis, in any plan that, you know, in physical therapy, in occupational therapy, in, uh, in speech therapy that we teach the kid, I demand a parent component in the treatment plan. If there is not a parent component in the treatment plan, I would not approve the services, right? So I would say, how is that different when we work with the children in VEYM uh, environment? You know, make parents an integral component of that child experience, uh, uh, a church, okay, uh, go and come go, you know, you, they don't have to be there a lot of time, you know, you teach them for 15 minutes, okay, go tới, uh, mà cô có thể rằng là, you know, be with us, present with us, and show us how best way, you know, this child can learn, you know, so it depends on whatever the need, they could be there less, or could they, like, they could be there more, you know, think you may end up with seizure a lot, oh, you know, Can you or go alternate your time from here and help us? The Marui, my Emma, got the seizure. You can help us take care of the kid. Uh, I don't think that's a problem with that at all. 
Um, you know, so I, that would be my recommendation because VEYM activities should not be different in terms of treatment planning than in any other environment that the kid is in, even with school. You know, why do we have IEP at school, individual ed educational plan? Because it's a plan that involves the parents, right? And then the parents will go home and also apply that same plan at home. And parents have to share the IEP with the ST, the OT, the PT, you know, the ADA people, so that everybody knows how each person uh, uh, work on this child. And it's not like you do whatever you want and you ignore what other people do. No, we require care coordination among all the uh, discipline for the child. Thank you, That's a <laughs> That's a lot of answer for one question. Uh, để mà em add on to cái question của anh Linh nhé, đây là Trung Hạnh, hai yeah. chị Tâm. Yeah, cảm ơn. Uh, so he asking how to help. Thì cái presentation của chị là tend towards the learning style. So we the teacher or we the educator, we accommodating to whatever, however we feel that the students are out to need met those criteria. But for me as a special education teachers, the very simple strategy that we're gonna have to start first, okay? Mm -hmm. We might not have the IEP, we might not know that, it, but it's actually working for across because we uh, educator that you can accommodate as teacher as winter, you can accommodate anyone with this strategy and it's called breaking down methods or the junking methods. Like you're eating chunks, right? You eat a lot of junks, but you one step at a time, one thing at a time before they master it or you set up a target and then you move on the next step. So that's one of the strategy teaching to accommodate students with special needs. This is a more uh, in a cognitive level. So specific learning disability. Okay, and it's also working great for students with ADHD. They can't pay attention. So you give them one task at a time to focus and master the skill, and then you move on to the next one. So that's for people to think about. Because when the parents send to you, the majority of them send to you a great student. It's not like in the public school. They have a you know massive amount of different or diversity, right? And of course, the learning style based on the uh, the presentations that you given to the students. So just stick with the four very basic stuff that we know are available, such as verbally. But some kids, you can accommodate them if they don't know how to write or write well or speak well, right? So you can ask them questions and they okay for you to assess their ability by responding uh, verbally. Or you can put a picture just like, you know, the way that how you uh, present the picture, very colorful, very good. Or we can do the auditory because if they hear the music that make them feel good or how the ever the reflections uh, to the music respond to whatever the target that of your lesson that was working, but those are the rep different representations. And then kinesthetically, that means you touch, you feel, right? So those are the four basic representations that our Huntington can start with, right? Because we don't have, you know, budgets or, or applications that we actually work. And then another thing is that when you teach our, I mean, assumingly, the tuny with disability, or you can accommodate to everyone is uh, frequently uh, receiving feedback, making sure that, you know, are you understand? Asking very simple questions, pause a little bit, and then uh, are we okay to move on to the next one? Are you okay with this? Can, um, can you explain this? You know, how you understand this for me? Just one simple, you know, word or a uh, phrase to make sure that they understand or meet your expectations. Mm -hmm. And then another thing is that you need to build relationship with them. And if something distracted them, you need to 
have a plan to remove the distractions. Because when kids, they know that not do, they know that they're not doing good with something. They have the tendency to, you know, build a wall and then they distract and then they misbehave. So you try to avoid all of those together. So I hope that's help. And another thing is that you focus on their strength. You need to find out what they're good at. So what if they're not doing something well, at, you might, you know, meet them in between. So it's just my sharing. I had a special need teacher for y'all. Well, that's, that's very good. That's very good. Yeah. I may invite you to the next webinar to talk yes. about that. With <laughs> She's, on the to, yes. She's on the list. Dạ vâng. Um, uh, em không thấy cái hand raise nữa cho em nói được không? Yeah. Uh, hơi yeah. ồn một tí xíu. Yeah. Thì um, there's a lot of thing that the kid need to learn in life and so on and so forth. Uh, but as a our phong trào thì như thánh thể đó thì mình sẽ lý các em to đến gần Chúa hơn. Thì mình có những cái material nào uh, rồi mình có focus in the future, mình có focus on làm sao training các huynh trưởng um, dùng những cái material đó để giúp cho các uh, trẻ mà specially biết được Chúa và yêu mến Chúa uh, bằng visual, bằng touch hay là bằng um, những um, những việc gì mà nó có thể hợp với các em. Nhưng mà I think that there are so many things các em need to learn. Đương nhiên mà đối với em mình need to focus làm sao mà mình có cái tool mình focus làm sao cho các em cảm nhận được tình yêu của Chúa, tình yêu của người xung quanh. Rồi để các em sống um, the best. À, thì em không biết là phong trào mình in the future mình sẽ đi về đâu để tìm những cái uh, material, những cái tour đó và focus on đó thôi. Nó simple, nó không cần phải là um, cái physical, những cái um, những cái um, skill thì có thể là ở trên trường họ sẽ dạy rồi ở trong nhà cũng phải dạy nhưng mà đối với em em nghĩ là làm sao những cái skill mà các em học ở trong trường hoặc là ở nhà các em có thể đến với thiếu nhi các em cảm nhận được cái tình thương thì đó là cái mà em ngồi em nghĩ là làm sao mình bring this awareness to tất cả huynh trưởng và các huấn luyện viên à, chúng ta làm sao focus on um, um, bring cái love các em feel được cái love đó rồi cộng thêm thứ hai nữa là Em có một cái ví dụ như ở nhà thờ em có một một bé bây giờ không còn bé nữa là ba mươi mấy tuổi là ba mươi mấy nhưng mà từ nhỏ đến lớn bé đã đi theo um, bố mẹ để giúp phòng thánh rồi cuối cùng chỉ là giúp uh, direct um, những người mà đi đậu xe thôi mà đi hang out at church happily and he feel so useful and he start to learn names from all over the, you know, people. Um, thành ra, đó là những cái sharing mà em nghĩ là um, làm sao có cái những cái task, những cái gì nó fit cho các em ở nhà thờ để có em feel các em useful and be in trong một cái friendly environment. Yeah, em xin hết. You talk about the relational aspect cũng, uh, you know, cũng giống như cái strength-based uh, uh, approach cũng giống như là cái uh, cái uh, brain based approach right because that person feel at being at church not, not such a meaningful experience she's loved she is affirmed uh you know she's included and so even though cái chat đó mà có thể người khác nói oh chỉ đi ngoài học tiếng lát but so what you know đối với her that's her whole you know you know life experience and I cannot and I probably assume that, you know, she probably look forward to every weekend just so that, you know, she be able to do that and get to meet people that, you know, she typically probably don't meet during the week. And that definitely, uh, and I'm, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, and the other thing that I'm going to say, I'm like, you know, that kids that they learn much better when they have certain equipment that they should have. Giống như có một số em with autism, you know, they need a sensory vest, hay là sensory blanket, hay là sensory jacket, là những cái áo mà nó nặng, để mà khi mà em nó mặc lên, đó, nó cảm thấy nó sướng. Và nên nếu mà nó xài đó những nhà, ở nhà, right, then we need to learn about that, talk to cha mẹ, you know, what are some of the things 
that calm her or make her feel easier. I would say, you know, I would ask that question. I would ask, you know, how does it work now when you do this to her or to him? Because that's learning from people that already experienced with this child for many years. So we don't have to go through that learning ourselves. You know, how like you my em mà có ADHD. Sometimes, you know, if they come to church and they have those little witches where they can roll in their hands, how like they can pull them around in their fingers, that help them a lot to, uh, to you know, release some of the ADHD uh, tendency. And that way, you know, they able to engage the brain um, to learn. And all of these kids, the other thing that like, when we teach them, you know, we need to have a visual schedule that they know when to transition from one activity to another, as well as you need to give them like warning, okay, in two more minutes, we're going to go do something else. So that's really important for these people as well. They don't switch, you know, off just because we tell them to do that. We need to learn how they behave uh, in terms of transition from activity to the other because it helps the, the brain feel at ease so that they can engage in the activity that we want to teach them. Monkey. I don't see anything on the text, uh, nor any hands. Anybody else have any questions? Uh, Joseph Wang Lee, em cotton này không vậy? Oh, just Joseph, how are you, em? Oh, thank good, you. Good, good. I'm name. sorry I'm late. I read the schedule as like central time, <laughs> but it was actually Eastern time. So I uh, came in just now. So, but I'm oh. glad to be invited here. Yeah. Cảm ơn anh chị khoe với mọi người về em mà chị mát em, uh, you know, in Texas and Liên Đoàn Điện Đức. And I said that I was so excited mm -hmm. because I met the first music therapist in my, you know, in, in my outside life. Um, so I I, I want to share a little, I wanna, would like em to share a little bit about yourself, what you do, you know, and how your work applies to the people with special needs or neurodivergent people, my em. Yes. So uh, I started... Um, in high school, I cycled between many possible careers I would go into. I would I went into engineering. I tried programming. I tried robotics. I tried biomedical sciences. Um, and then I cycled to pharmacy. Um, and eventually at the school I went to eventually for pre-pharmacy, I found music therapy. And I was like, there's no way <laughs> this is real. Um, but I met the teacher. She was like, who here plays an instrument? And I was like, oh, of course. Me, it's, I play an instrument. And then um, she looks at me, everyone in the crowd looks at me and I realize, oh, I'm the only person raising my hand. <laughs> so uh, so she goes to me, she's like, what's your name? I said, Joseph. She says, what do you play? A uh, violin. Cool, I like you, you should talk to me after. So um, I start talking with her um, and then it, it, we basically made a deal where, okay, if I wanted to stick with pharmacy, I'll take advanced you know, chemistry and biology. But if I wanted to stick with music therapy, I would take the intro to music therapy class at the same time. And then, um, well, I stuck with music therapy um, after a while. And then I graduated with my undergrad in 2021. Um, I'm about to finish, I'm about to graduate with my master's um, after this summer. So a lot is moving forward right now. But um, so I've worked with many populations for about the last seven years um throughout my undergraduate course my master's course work and eventually i'm moving forward uh to you know my job and everything but i've worked with uh children and teenagers with developmental disorders including uh autism spectrum disorder uh, adhd um i've also worked with those who have down syndrome um especially in uh, young adults i've worked with to address mental health um self-esteem self-awareness and self-expression uh, in teenagers uh, and young adults. Um, and I've also worked with the elderly in terms of memory recall and uh, social interaction with others because they tend to isolate when they have Alzheimer's and dementia. So I've worked with a very a, a big variety of populations, but um, I'm, I'm very inspired when I see um, in Tunyi that we have, you know, psychology degrees. We have those who work with special education um, because it's not just, oh, you know, how much can you you learn that I deliver to you? We work in a very 
like we said, individualized care. It's very um, humanistic in a way. We don't do it on what we do. We don't work on them. We work with them. So um, I work with Yang Ao. Um, and uh, I, I, what I do a lot with them is this thing called ISO principle, where we work with the clients or the, the students at their level. And then if we wanted to raise it or lower it to a certain level, we will work with them where they're at. And then we will get to where we want them to be. <laughs> so uh, Nyang Ao is uh, notorious for you know having a lot of energy that is hard to contain. So what I do is I work with that energy. So um, a lot of people think, oh, let's start you know with the, the gospel lesson and then we'll do a game. I actually like to do the game first. So um, I may pull out my guitar, I may do something that engages them, I will use the gospel lessons in that game. And then I will read the gospel right after, mm -hmm. and then associate the lessons with it. There was one time I did a an instrument passing game. Um, and we had a circle, you know, we put all the kids in a circle, uh, everyone uh, got an instrument. Some people didn't, but that's to facilitate the passing. Um, so I would sing a song about passing instruments. Everyone would pass. And then eventually I would get them to stop. Play, 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 play. And then, you know, whoever's holding an instrument gets to play. Stop. Pass, 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 pass. We go around. Um, and then what we would do is kind of verbally process after. And my question would be, and I think the gospel lesson around that time was fairness. Because um, Jesus taught me, us to be fair. So I was like, okay, so today's topic is fairness. What was fair about that game? And then we would have the kids say, oh, we all got to hold the instruments. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, what else was fair? Oh, we all got a chance to pass. Okay, awesome. What else? We all got a chance to play the instruments. I'm like, okay, good deal. And then that's when I would transition into the gospel. And because it was so active, um, it uh, calls a lot of parts of like the brain because music addresses um, this, I think the right side of the brain. Um, so it catches their attention a lot. Uh, since it's very active, um, we did a lot of shaking. So it, the blood from the heart, because the you know, heart pumps a lot of blood, goes throughout the body, also goes up to the brain, which facilitates a lot of brain function. So they're able to process information, verbally speak, express a lot easier. It facilitates a lot of it. Um, so that, that's how I use music to address Nyang Ao because it's not just, oh, I get to play music and then you know, they might get something out of it. We use music as a strategic tool. And like I said, ISO principle, we met them at their high energy, brought them down to a low energy. And that's how they were able to process the gospel and the lessons that we would glean from it. So that's one example that I used with them. Thank you so, so much, Joseph. And, uh, I already asked Joseph, so in the future, he will be uh, do one session for us. Thank, mm. thank you, Joseph. So, so wonderful. And I, I, I think those practical tips my aunt just shared, really, really helpful for all of us. All right, Joseph, you'll be next in time, right? We will con um, get in touch with you. Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, we have two two more minutes. Um, so chắc không còn ai có câu hỏi, but I'm going to quickly share với mọi người cái um cái webinar page của mình để rồi mình biết mình vô mình uh, pick up information hoặc là follow up mình biết là the next meeting and cái link của mình như thế nào nhé. Um, so uh, mọi người biết là trong phong trào mình có cái education center đấy. Right? So um, everyone see my screen right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, cái course mình có thắc Ờ, ở trong cái chat group đó thì mọi người vào trong đây mọi người lock in vào không cần phải là phi thân thể member cũng có thể lock in vào trong mười cái mình vô cho nó mình search thì sau khi mình vô trong cái bo mình search thì mình chạy xuống mình tìm nó nằm ở trong đây nè à, mình search chữ wellness thì nó chạy ra thôi à, tại vì nó theo cái thứ tự của cái alphabet ha thì nó chạy xuống đây xong mình bấm vô đây thì nếu mà mình lấy đó thì mình um, vô mình coi trong đây người ta có cái mission là cái gì sự cái giờ cái link này nó stay the same vậy không cần phải đi kiếm nữa cứ mỗi lần mà nhớ chỉ cần nhớ cái link mà vô education center xong rồi trong cái đó thì mình vô mình có thể mình go back cho những cái uh, cái recording nó đã happen before và cái slide cái người presenter đi present it cái objective là cái gì cái purpose của mình là cái gì thì hôm nay cái uh, cái slide uh, của bác sĩ thanh tâm nằm ở đây để để cái recording của put it up here uh, xin mọi người mình có thể mình uh, dùng cái này để mình uh, eventually mình post cái câu hỏi và những cái thắc mắc 
mình post câu hỏi uh, liên quan đến cái bài khóa nha ở trong đó trước rồi đây có cái disclaimer của cái um, cái effort mà bên cái uh, health and wellness của phong trào đang làm cho mình nhé yeah. uh, so mình make sure mình read cái này and eventually những cái quote như vậy đó we will make it become a class để mà có những người khác họ có thể vô hội nghe uh, những cái sharing của trưởng hạn trưởng cho sếp của hiếu của tất cả mọi người đó when they listen to that nó rất là helpful bên cạnh là cái hai phút mà cái người presenter họ đưa cho mình họ gợi ý cho mình cái idea cái thinking about what we want to do uh, những cái sharing của mình rất là quan trọng để mà những người chữ khác họ ngồi họ nghe để rồi họ có thể họ uh, pick up họ làm similar hoặc là uh, để creatively come up with a different solution nha yeah. um, cái link uh, nếu mà không biết thì mình cứ vào cái site nó gọi là education center của phong trào này nhé yeah. mình login vô thôi không cần phải có login phong trào mình dùng gmail của mình được xong rồi nếu mà mình login vô đó thì nó sẽ show cho mình cái the next cái meeting của mình là cái gì uh, mình vô cái dashboard nè nếu mà mình ấy thì người ta sẽ cần biết ở uh, trong cái dashboard ô oh, hôm nay có cái hội nghị lúc uh, uh, on Wednesday lúc uh, 10, 10 giờ um, đó là cái ông uh, oh, xin lỗi lúc 6 giờ ở uh, đây là 6 giờ PD, uh, PDT nhé và mọi người nhớ rất là the second Wednesday của mỗi tháng cứ cứ second Wednesday của mỗi tháng uh, with that uh, I'm going to quickly uh, talking about the next meeting uh, the next um, Uh, topic nó là coping with stress and strategy. I'm going to collect more information uh, cái bio của chị Bảo Hạnh and then the objectives you're going to talk about and the slide we put it up here. So uh, date and time already there. Cái link thì mọi người biết rồi. Chú biết vô đây mình lấy cái link nhé. So that will be the next one. Cảm ơn ban chấp trung ương rất là nhiều đã promote and then make a beautiful slide uh, uh, you know, uh, flyer cho cái này. Uh, ít nhất là trong những cái lần tới thì mình sẽ có cái cái này nó sẽ đẹp, đẹp hơn. We are still working on this. Cái sạch này sẽ more uh, beautiful and then um, những cái video này nó sẽ be um, recorded and clean up and make it become a course cho mọi người sau này người ta có thể bằng người ta coi. Rồi, I think that's all for tonight. Không biết có cha nào ở đây hay là có ai ở đây, có tu sĩ nào ở đây không ạ? Có bị tu sĩ nào ở đây không? Có ai ở đây không? Nếu mà không thì... Uh, Thế mặc cho tất cả các anh chị em trong đây cảm ơn à, bác sĩ quan tâm rất là nhiều nhé những cái hy sinh những cái cố gắng những cái nỗ lực của chị uh, not just for this but don't có a lot of things that going on trong cái vấn đề về cái specialist chị là cái người cái pioneer cho cái công việc này trong phong trào cảm ơn chị rất là nhiều à, để dành giờ cho tụi em à, có uh, bác chủ tịch dương ở đây nè dương ơi, dương có đôi lời giống dương uh, before we done dương chấp nhờ dương dân được cùng việc luôn nha ok không có các cha thì nhờ bác dương vậy nhé Okay, <laughs> <laughs> uh, cha, cha with a kid, of course. Rồi, um, um, thank you, anh Linh thật nhiều. Um, and really, chị Thanh Tâm, cảm ơn chị thật nhiều. I, I, I think um, we truly are uh, sort of at the verge of this groundbreaking effort to really tap in as a community, utilizing our own asset, our own talent, our own God-given talent để mà accompany and đồng hành với mọi người. And đối với các anh chị huynh trưởng, I, I invite you to... Uh, you, you know, Pope Francis recently just released, I think just a couple of days ago from, from Rome, the um, part of the encyclical emphasizing the infinite um, uh, dignity of của con người. Mỗi người con người chúng ta as mình được tạo dựng bởi hình ảnh của Thiên Chúa qua hình ảnh Thiên Chúa and with full dignity, regardless of who we are, uh, with full dignity, what we look like, our um, abilities or our thanh giá chúng ta phải vác. And it's amazing that he emphasized sort of over time we neglect, we, uh, you know, uh, push him aside, we bully, we marginalize, we make fun of. And that's really counterintuitive to our faith as a uh, Yao, where we ought to um, promote and value and have literally reverence to mỗi người as cái hình ảnh của Thiên Chúa Tạo Dựng. So, cảm ơn chị nhiều with these different ways of learning and and invite các trưởng to continue to do the same and apply some of these practical steps chung với nhau. And those with Uh, specialty skills that uh, we have yet have to uh, to discover. Just give us a ping, send us an email. Uh, like I said, this is a community where we all come together. Mỗi người chúng ta góp một bàn tay, and the more that we can do so, uh, we're, we're the only one like it that all of us can volunteer and do so. So cảm ơn chị thâm tâm thật nhiều in in doing this. And I know when when I go on special missions and recovery and whenever I get stuck with medical, like literally, I call chị thâm tâm say, hey, Jay, I'm, I'm dealing like literally. Last time I was in Venezuela, I'd say, Jay, hey, I'm dealing with this person. Uh, can you give me some some pointers on dealing with um, certain medical conditions? So uh, we're, we're grateful for you, Che, and and everyone else as well who've been helping along with this journey. Um, anything that we can do to better improve from Chow, uh, we're here to do so.
Thôi thì trong tâm tình đó chúng ta cũng dành uh, một hai giây phút để chúng ta uh, cảm tạ Chúa tri ân tình Ngài. Em qua những hơi thở chúng ta thở as the air we breathe in. We come to the realization that this is truly God's gift for us, God's Easter blessing, the gift of life. And as we breathe, we know that all that we do is to glorify the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving Jesus, we give thanks to you for Chị Thâm Tâm, uh, to all of the Anh Chị Quân Chữ who are present here, those who've offered their shot, their thoughts, their experience, their gifts, and many more who will continue to contribute to the development of this um, emphasis to um, reverence, to support, to journey, to accompany, and to recognize that all of us have an infinite uh, uh, level of dignity as God has created us to be. And we give thanks for the blessing of Phong Chao after 40 years and all the things that we've been able to do um, through the many helping hands of các cha, các sơ, các thầy, các huấn luyện viên, các trưởng, uh, we're at this 40-year mark and continue to grow. And all is because of the many volunteer huấn luyện viên that we've had to help with Phong Chao. Uh, we offer all this to you. May you sanctify and bless the time that we have here tonight. And all that we do, we offer this to you all for the great glory of your name. Sáng danh Đức Chúa Cha và Đức Chúa Con và Đức Chúa Thánh Thần như đã có trước vô cùng và bây giờ và hằng có và đời đời chẳng cùng. Amen. And as we close the night, I invite all present here, sort of as we live our Eucharistic day, let us take a second to reflect on our day, whether it be through our thoughts, our words, our action, that we may have a friend, a fellow brother and sisters, um, an individual with disability, and in some way we may have disrespect them in some capacity. We ask God for forgiveness and with a merciful heart, May he forgive our wrongdoing. Lạy Chúa con, Chúa là đứng cho tôi chọn làm vô cùng. Chúa đã dựng nên con và cho con Chúa ra đời. Chịu này chịu chết vì con, mà con đã cắt lòng nghe tội nghiệp của Chúa. Thì con lo đau đớn, cùng che ghép một con trên hết một con sĩ. Con dốc lòng chưa cả và nhờ ơn Chúa. Thì con sẽ ăn ta dịp cùng làm việc đẹp đọc cho sự amen. Cho dù chúng ta ao ước được trước Chúa vào lòng một cách đích thực, sacramentally, many of us are unable to, with a yearning heart, with passion, with desire, let us open our souls and heart to receive him spiritually. Like Chúa Giêsu Thánh Thể, con yêu mến Chúa, xin Chúa ngự vào tâm hồn con. Và ở lại với con Amen. Trời đã sẽ chiều, Giêsu ơi, con nhờ tay mẹ Maria mà dâng lên Chúa, dâng chung lời cảm ơn, dâng chốn cả xa cùng các việc con làm. Các lời con xin cùng với mọi con nguy con chịu cho một thành quả cùng với bóng chiều ta Giêsu Maria con hòa ca dân về nơi bao la chúa ban phép lành một đêm ngủ an have a most blessed night and we'll see you at the next uh, gathering all right see you